Yeah, look at the Queen's engagement calendar when she was in good health. It was uh, absolutely nonstop. So Lady Colin Campbell told us that Meghan's plan was to monetize the royal family. Do you think she succeeded in that? You, you know, we've got these big numbers bandied around, Netflix deals, Spotify deals. Were, were, were they, um, was that cash in the bank or did they ruin them somehow? See, I think I think the real story is coming out now. By the way, I agree with uh, Lady Colin Campbell. They wanted to monetize the royal family. And in return, they've actually made the royal family more popular because you see the contrast. But for example, the Spotify deal, it was reportedly around anywhere from 17 million to 25 million pounds or 18 million dollars to 20 million dollars. I don't remember the conversion rate. So it was around there. But because their contract was canceled after a year, they only ended up with the first chunk of the money, which I think it was two million or three million, because it was based on going for at least five or six seasons. The Netflix deal is reported anywhere around a hundred million, a hundred million plus. But again, they don't get a check. Here's your hundred million dollars. It's based on everything that they produce. And because Netflix a few weeks ago released the ratings because they're now trying to challenge all the big streamers and they know that they're failing besides Hulu, like Disney is collapsing in the Disney Plus market, like they're losing billions. So Netflix releases their numbers basically saying, hey, look at us. Every streamer should do the same. But when they did that, they also hurt themselves because it showed that the Megan's Harry and Megan series, the very first one, it only reached in the top 10 in the UK for a week. Nowhere else in the globe did it ever hit in the top 10. Nowhere. It's actually at number 217th on the most watch list for Netflix. That means they lost money. So aren't they going to try to go to is it Amazon or Audible now? Audible. They're trying. I don't think anything is going to come of that deal. I, I think at this point with William Morris, because remember, they're represented by Ari Emanuel. And he's a star in Hollywood, but everything that I've been hearing um, and everything that we are getting from the press at the same time shows that William Morris is embarrassed because what's the job of an agency to get you work, to get your profile higher? Well, either A, the Megans aren't listening to them, they keep making the same mistakes, or William Morris has given up and like, okay, but when you have other clients who are going, wait, 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 why am I signed up with you? Because now you have this brand, which is toxic. Better Up, for example, right? Harry signed up with Better Up as the kind of like chief visionary officer. He supposedly got stock options and a six figure salary. Well, four months ago, they started firing people because, like, you know, we're in tough times. We don't have enough money. But people were furious. Employees were like, I'm working. He's not. His brand is toxic, but you're paying him. So I think 2024, all of this is going to collide. They're, I think they're just going down under. I think there is one other possibility, because I like to be objective. Unless WME has created this, how shall I say it, this long shot underdog story. Because Hollywood is known to do crazy stuff. Unless they've created, they, they've peppered everything in the newspapers with like, she's doing bad, she's doing bad. And then try to blow everybody away with something coming out, let's say in end of January, February, they're like, look, the comeback kid. Cause remember Hollywood is all about the stories. So you'd have the first act, you know, they get married, they leave the UK, they go to Canada, they come to the U S they're embraced. Then they collapse and make one mistake after the other. Da, da, da. They're about their last breath. Then the third and final act, they come back. Like I can see Hollywood doing that. But in reality, I once Spotify, Bill Simmons, once he called them grifters, I think that was the beginning of the end. Then when you had the worldwide privacy tour from South Park, that was the last coffin out. Everything else is just people pulling it out of their hands instead of them letting go. If they were smart, truly clever, they would disappear for about a year, a year to two, just disappear on an island, a farm. Don't show up to anything. Just go live your life. We're going, we have to focus on, you know, our family and that's it. Let everybody forget, but they're not the ego. Which led to my next question, because it sounds like they've got enough money to disappear. Even if they only got a fraction of the tens of millions or the hundred million deal, they got this house uh, in Katy Perry's neighborhood. What do you reckon they're worth? Do you reckon it's millions? Do you reckon it's over 10 million? Well, when I was trying to figure out what their worth was, 
if I recall correctly, I believe Harry got 10 million from his mother, 10 million around so from his grandmother. Let's say they got 10 million up front from Netflix, they got 3 million from Spotify, they got a $25 million deal for four books. But the burn rate, that's the thing. They're paying around three to four hundred thousand a year just for property taxes, another three hundred to four hundred thousand a month for their mortgage note. Then around one to three million, depending how many security, how the bodyguards they have around them for a year. That's not counting private jets that they don't get to ride on somebody else's. Like when he went to that Katy Perry concert, their part of the bill was the 46 grand. You know, fuel costs. That was their part, even though it was this an heir of a Texas oil baron. So their lifestyle, plus the memberships, to like, what is it called? The Santa Monica Club or Santa Vincente uh, Bungalow Club. That's three to $4,500 a month, but they have 10 of those memberships around the world. So you have another 40 to 50 grand in these private club memberships. When they went to the Invictus Games, when Megan went alone, she took a service, I think it was called Air First, where it's like, if you're going to go on a private jet, you don't just drive yourself to the airport, you know, with the private hangars. No, no, no. There's a service that you pay $3,500 and they come pick you up and take you to their private lounge. Like, see, that's the ridiculousness of it. They're not billionaires. They have no income coming in, yet they're spending it as if they were Hollywood royalty. Did you ever total all those up to try and figure out the annual expenses? I, I came somewhere around, I think it was the closest figure I came to was around five to eight million outside. Expenses. Well, because again, They've had multiple dates where they're flying. At each flight they take, they still have to pay the fuel. This isn't in the beginning where Tyler Perry is sending his jet. So you take 10 flights, which they've done in the last two or three months. That's almost 400000 and just fuel costs. Forget if they're paying any fees. Let's And I'm just calculating if the planes are like, yeah, you can have my plane. You don't have to pay for the the, the captain, the staff, hangar fees or any of that. Just pay the fuel. That, that would be a loan, 400000 That's not talking about, but see, here's the problem. Their expenses are starting to also seem that they're coming out of the foundation, like Invictus Games in Germany. The Defense Department gave a lump sum of, not a lump, but altogether in the end, around $40 million, uh, where it seems now that 80 to 90% of that was for their expenses. So see, that's where the problem is. They might have this amount, but they're pulling it from places, from foundation supposedly from the invictus games and that well is drying up because the first year that they had the r12 foundation they brought in 13 million from two private donors this year they didn't bring in what was it six hundred thousand? that's it and they burned through nine million ten million how can they justify burning through that much jet fuel when they are purportedly eco ambassadors i know it's crazy again this is this is what happens when you get a D-list actress who's basically in need of an estrogen hit so she can give like a hormone high by gaslighting the audience. I mean, these are people who want to be in the headlines every single day. I don't think Harry wants to as much. I don't. Because he doesn't seem to be comfortable in those situations. If you just look at the way he is, I think he goes along and he goes, okay, it's fun. But William Morris could only get her what? Did you see what last month? Was it six weeks ago when she went when they went to the hockey game in Canada? Well, they turned that into a commercial. I'm like, wow, that's what William Morris can get for her. A tenth of a second spot in a hockey commercial. That, that's why I'm saying nothing they're doing is panning out. The only thing they have left is for him to put out spare to and for her to put out her memoir. But here's the problem. I, I was talking about this six months ago. The closer that they try to get to Hollywood, the further away they are from the crown, which is the only reason most people care about them. So their brand dies the closer they reach Hollywood. And Hollywood goes, well, wait, you don't have anything to offer, which is, I think, why they wanted to go back to the UK. They, they wanted to start repairing because they need to get that. They need to refill their royal credit cards. Look, see, we're part of the fam. We're here. Remember who we were? And it's just not working for him.